Twitter and every other single social media platform should articulate clearly what their policies are, what their standards are for violence and harassment and safety, and then follow those standards. What happened is that, so we have this um, um, Elon Jet account on Twitter. And what it does is it basically shows where Elon's jet is at any given moment in time. So he's been complaining about this account for a while. He offered money to um, the person behind it, Jack Sweeney, if he would take it down. Jack Sweeney said no, but he made a counter offer for more. There's a little back and forth. Um, ultimately, at this point now, um, uh, Musk has just taken it down altogether. And I guess the, and his, the um, Jack Sweeney's personal account as well. So that is how we got to this point. Um, Elon Musk is, is claims that it is a matter of personal safety, but I find that claim not credible given that this is publicly available data. It's not secret data. It's pretty available and I'm pretty sure he has pretty good security around him. I think it's just being vindictive or thorough. I don't know. <laughs> you could look at it either way. My first reaction is this strikes me as entirely in keeping with what we have been seeing over the past several weeks, which is that um, suspension and banning decisions are just entirely arbitrary and capricious. On the one hand, he is and the corporation exercising their First Amendment rights, which they are allowed to do. On the other hand, I do think it's not consistent with, I think, some of the statements that he's made where he's been very critical of content moderation. And I think what he's happening right now is two things. One is he's discovering, as have many before him, that content moderation is hard. Um, but then I think the other thing that's happening is he's responding to that by sort of throwing up his hands and not even trying to do it well. I mean, it's if you look at the fact that he dissolved the Trust and Safety Council a couple of days ago, he's fired most of their Trust and Safety staff who are in charge of content moderation. So it seems that he's just given up and just said, well, I'm just, it's just going to be my, my whim, uh, which is not, I think, going to be great for Twitter users as a whole. If it's not just about this particular account, there are lots of journalists, human rights defenders, and other people around the world that actually really depend on Twitter in particular to communicate pretty important information. And when you don't have transparency, you don't have consistency, we're putting them in a, in a very difficult position, which legally you might have the right to do, but I think, you know, it's really not appropriate or fair. What is fair though, is when you have a situation where you have a clear and consistent policy and you follow it clearly and consistently and you allow a process for appeal so notice an appeal and that just, none of that seems to have happened here and none of that seems to have happened with respect to a lot of the decisions that are getting made right now on twitter where it gets complicated is with these really big social media platforms that are trying to host every different kind of conversation and then trying to have clear and consistent policies. It's a real challenge. And you can look at not just Twitter, but if you can look at Facebook, Facebook has been throwing millions of dollars at content moderation for a decade. They still make mistakes all the time. What this is really highlighting for everybody is something that, that we've been concerned about for a while, which is that there's an enormous amount of power over online speech that's concentrated in relatively few hands. So not just Elon Musk, but also, you know, Mark Zuckerberg and, and a few other folks. And that's not great. That's dangerous for overall speech because it means that they just have so much power to shape speech. I don't think that we want, you know, a group of people based in Silicon Valley to make decisions for the world about speech. I think that's very concerning. I think it is definitely going to keep happening. And the reason I think that is because it's already been happening already for the past month. This is just the latest instance, but it seems very clear that the decisions of who is on Twitter and off Twitter basically depend on the whims of Elon Musk on any given day. So that is the new reality for Twitter users. And I suspect there will soon be a lot fewer of them.